heard the phrase, uh, the person who cares the least has all the power. Yes. Okay. What do you think that means? Um, well, I think people think that it means that you play hard to get, then that, you know, that's a good thing. Well, but I have a friend okay. that always says that never, never give your power away because the one that has, that cares the most, cares the least, cares the least has the power has Wait, the power is that the way okay but Wait. isn't that to me that's such a unhealthy way to approach a relationship is not caring okay because what it's saying is the person who cares the more is going to get less in the relationship but see that that's all about being emotionally mature okay so what about playing hard to get i don't think that works yeah do you know, I think works. playing hard to get is taught to women as, okay, so for women who maybe give too much in relationship, it's kind of like a turnaround to do the opposite as a way to maybe temporarily get a guy attracted to you. So if you, if, if you don't try too hard, a person's going to be attracted to you. Well, have you ever been attracted to someone who didn't try that hard? Did you ever chase anyone? No. Oh, come on. No, I never chased me. Anybody. No, I didn't. <laughs> I always jokingly say you chased me. No, well, you know, this really, however, what you did do is make effort. And I want to talk about that. But I want to, before I get into the, the way you made effort different than other people, when I started this conversation about the person who cares the least has all the power, what I've observed with so many women is they give their power away in relationship. Do you do you think that's oh, true? That is true. Okay. So I actually have a list of seven ways women give their power away. And I wanted to share that because this is basically do the opposite of what I'm saying here. So the first thing I see women do is the relationship is all on the man's terms. In other words, they abandon their standards, they abandon their boundaries because it's all based on what a man wants. Right. That's a no-go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you ever operate like that in dating? It was all... Well, in dating? No. Yeah. No. So how did you express your needs, wants, and desires? How did you express your standards so you didn't give your power away? Well, I didn't... Uh, I wasn't really... <laughs> what? When I wasn't into somebody, I wasn't into something. And I, it was just. Okay, but that's know, not being that into that. But how am I going to give my power to somebody that I'm not even into? Okay, but if you are into someone, could I you see. I never gave my power. Okay, you never gave your power no, away. Now, you did. have girlfriends you've seen give their power away to men. Yes. The relationship is all on their terms. They're waiting for the guy to call. It's that scene right. in the movie. Uh, he's just not that into you. She's waiting by yeah. the answering machine to see if he called, right? right? But that's all based on the relationship on his terms. Would you say that in our relationship, it's a two-lane street? Well, it always has been. Um, like, you know, you talk jokingly. Yeah jokingly that I chased him, but I didn't chase him. I just thought I needed to know to get to know him. I don't. Well, you made effort. You made, you initiate phone calls, uh, you know, but it wasn't what we did. I like what Matthew Hussey says is you invested and then you tested. Okay. You invest and test, or in other words, that he make, I made effort. You made effort. You made effort. I made effort. There was this dance. It's kind of like a, a volleyball game, but you know, like a pickleball game. A pick -ball. <laughs> I never knew if this was going to go anywhere. So with I us, just, yeah, I yeah. just thought, you know, he's in California. Maybe when I'm out there, we'll have coffee or something. Okay. So this actually leads into something I talk about in my private coaching is something I call being passionate and detached. Mm -hmm. And what that means is passionate means being open to the possibilities and mm -hmm. detached means detached to the outcome. Okay. I think that's what you were in our relationship. You were open to the possibility, but you weren't attached to the outcome. No. And I think that's how I handle dating too. Yeah. It's just, you know, you're meeting a new friend. And, and so I'm going to share with you your approach I found very attractive. In other words, I didn't feel like you were trying too hard. You weren't trying too little either. In other words, I, I, I got to tell you something. I dated women where it felt like I had to pull teeth to get them to like answer a phone or go out on a date. And after a couple of times, 
you know what? Playing hard to get. Homie, don't play that game. <laughs> yeah. And I was terrible at returning text. So. Oh, yeah. You were bad at that. You're still bad at that. But coming back to, I think women give their power away. Another way a woman gives a power away is they're afraid to speak their truth to a guy. Mm, yeah. Okay. Do you remember one of the first things you said to me, speaking your truth? No. What did I say? The deodorant thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you yeah. want to share that story? Okay. By the way, what she's about, what Marie's about to share is a story of something very early in our relationship. It was something that was uncomfortable. And the way she brought it up was, I appreciate it because you spoke your truth instead of stuffing your feelings. Yeah. So do you want to share this story? Well, he had picked me up at my friend's house in a convertible and it was all sweaty and stuff. And then... <laughs> And then we were just sitting around talking and um, I just couldn't take the, the BO, you know. While you're and talking, I want to, I have to do something on the computer. So, so keep talking. So, yeah. So I just couldn't take it. And I said to him, you know, I'm going to say something that I, I don't, I mean it from the heart, not, um, it's just that I really think that your deodorant isn't working for you. <laughs> I remember that. Um, she shared something. And what's interesting, it was something uncomfortable. But what I appreciate most is you spoke your truth. And ever since that day, you've always spoken your truth with me. And you I find, to? well, I see a lot of women, that's a way of giving your power, a way of not speaking up when something is bothering you, when something mm -hmm. doesn't feel right. I know most women don't like feeling uncomfortable, like, where's this relationship going? That's, remember, you did that with the one guy? You remember Which you, one? the one before? One before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, where is this going? Um, you know, I, I really want to talk about this because I want to know where it's going. And and he said, well, you know, I've been hurt. I've been cheated on. I've been la, 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 la. So I really want to take it slow. And I'm like, so I got, we were in a jacuzzi and I got out and I'm like, I didn't get an answer. <laughs> yeah, taking it slow. Well, what means, does that mean? Yeah, in other words, so when guys, here's the thing though, you weren't unafraid to ask about the relationship. I think women, that's a way of giving your power away. Yeah. And that's not, you know, playing hard to get. That's not being engaged in the relationship. Yeah. So by actually making effort, you know, by making effort, we men find that attractive. But it's not too much effort. See, a lot of women fear that asking that question is too much effort. I, well, you know, it comes back to if he's not the right guy, then then he'll he might not want to answer it. He'll get offended. Like, okay, like that guy that wanted to take it slow. Okay, what does slow mean? Does that mean that you know you're on the dating apps as well? Um, does it mean what does it mean? Like, oh, I want to take it slow, and but in what way? Yeah. What does that take? So I think it's taking it slow is a, is saying, I'm afraid to commit to you. So mm -hmm. I need a long period of time before I let you know whether or not I want to commit to you. Yeah. And I'm like, ladies, if a guy is saying, let's take it slow, then say, you know what? Let's take the sex a lot slower by taking it off the table. So when you actually catch up to where I'm at, we can start having sex again. Right? That's my two cents on the subject. Another way a woman gives her power away is when the relationship ends, all she does is focus on him. It's all about him. It's all about him. It's all about him. And instead of why, why do I want, why am I caring about someone who doesn't want me? Well, you follow that? Yes. Okay. Well, there are a lot of women that, oh, no, they want to have another conversation. They want closure. What? It doesn't matter. Well, I mean, to some degree, closure. Well, OK, no, I agree. There, when you, somebody, that is the closure. You're done. I get, <laughs> but I think sometimes having a conversation makes can help. But at the end of the day, you're still at the same place. It's yeah. over. So that revisiting the relationship focusing on him is in some ways is going, how can I get him back? How can I get him back? In fact, it drives me nuts when I see videos out there, how to text your ex back, how right. to get your ex right. back. Look, if a guy doesn't want to be with you, there's a nice four letter word next, N-E-X-T. Uh, another thing I see women give their power away is that uh, they're waiting for the guys to initiate contact. I, you know, you know, I had no problem initiating contact. Who used to send good morning texts to me in the beginning? 
Well, because I lived in Chicago. So you woke up two hours yeah. earlier. So Marie used to text me in the morning. And quite frankly, I was up when some of those text messages came mm -hmm. in. But I like that you initiated contact. So it's not trying too hard when you initiate contact with someone. I, I don't like this dating advice that's all predicated on the man chasing the woman. Here's the thing. A man could chase you, but it still might be an unhealthy relationship. A man might make all yeah. this effort and it's he might be emotionally mature. So rather than playing the game, you know, m why don't you actually make mutual effort and see if you're on the same page? I agree. Okay. Now, another way women give their power away is they stop doing their pre-relationship life for this relationship. Um, yeah. Like if they used to play pickleball, you don't stop playing pickleball. I know your shoulder hurts, so you can't do it. But if you want to go visit your friends, you go visit your friends. If you want to go do things, you do the things you did before your relationship. However, a relationship might require, you know, being mindful of where to balance time. Right. Okay. But in a healthy relationship, you don't abandon everything for the person. Well, I've had friends that, you know... It was a joke that our girlfriends, we'd all talk about it. And the, oh, so-and-so is in a relationship. We won't see her for six months. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's giving her power away. Yeah. And then, you know, six months later, there she was. <laughs> Pretty much ever since you moved in, I still visit my dear friends every Friday. Well, every other Friday night yeah. we get together because I don't want to abandon my pre-relationship life nor do I want you to abandon yours, yeah. even though you- And then live. I get rid of them every other Friday. Then. Oh, you get the break <laughs> from me. Okay, thanks so much. Another thing is the feeling you can't live without them. This is the only person I'll ever have chemistry with. Well, not with that attitude. Well, <laughs> what do you mean? Like if that's the attitude you have, then you're never going to find somebody. I see so many women in their mid fifties going, this man I had, he was so amazing. He was the best man I ever had. He broke up with her. He doesn't want her. He breadcrumbs her. And yet still somehow he's the only person on the universe. Yeah. Let me ask you, I'm assuming you've had more than two or three relationships in your life. Yeah. That's... Okay. So by the time you got me, the world didn't crash with the previous guy that ended with you. No, I went to travel the world. I went to, <laughs> I went to find myself, you know, the whole eat, pray, love. That was me. Yeah. yeah. So coming back to this idea, men are attracted to women who don't try hard. I think there's a balance between making effort, mm -hmm. making effort versus doing the playing the hard to get. So how did you do that within yourself? How did you reconcile not trying too hard and yet giving enough? Like, am I making sense? Yeah. So for me, just, you know, you've already connected with this person in some way. And if they're not, um, if they're not appreciative of what I'm doing, then I'm not going to give any more. Yeah. You know, so it's got to be reciprocal at some point. Now, I do appreciate somebody that, that, you know, a couple of, I met some really nice men. We just didn't click, but, yeah. you know, they would plan a, a nice evening. You know, I, we'd have a meet and greet and then go on a second date. And I didn't, um, my shirt. I didn't feel like, um, I didn't, it didn't go further just because it just wasn't, clicking. And I, I'm one of those that likes to tell people, you know, I don't want to waste your time with mine. You know, you're a great guy. And, but, you know, yeah, but you didn't also like, if it didn't make it by the third or fourth date, it didn't turn into anything either. Well, I, it didn't usually it didn't go to the third date. I yeah. already knew like the first one, if usually for me, I knew on the first date, but sometimes it's a good guy. Let me give him another chance. And then you just go, no, this isn't, it's not right. And there's no point in continuing it. You know, before you, I hadn't had a third date with someone for almost three years. Oh, and your third date took like, what, three months? <laughs> you mean for us? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean it took three months? Oh, no, we met twice. No, we met twice, then two weeks later. But my point is, is I, if I knew by the second date, I knew by the second date, I, well, let me reframe that. If I wanted a third date with someone, I usually wanted to explore a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Like the meet, well, first is a meet and greet, then it's the first date. But by the second date, if I knew I wanted to see them a third time, I'd say I want to explore a relationship with you. 
No one ever said that to me, though. Really? No. No one. No one ever said I want to explore a relationship. I mean, like, look. So what do you think? Coaches are out there. Okay. So so <laughs> what? Isn't that interesting? I want to explore a relationship with you. What does that feel like to hear that? Um. Well, if if you're uh, into this person enough, then like for me, it would have been like, okay. I mean, I, I would like just. Because we did that. We talked about Well, that. because in our particular case, because of the distance, we talked about how would we make this work. Right. I think, you know, it's funny. I was talking to a client today who um, met a guy on a trip, okay? And during the trip, she realized, uh, she, uh, she realized, oh my God, in, in 10 days, oh, they were in Africa. In uh -huh. 10 days, it was a nightmare. Okay. Oh, wow. Not that it was like a date or anything, but it's just, he, she had this trip plan. He was going to go as well. But she said something very interesting that I wanted to share with everyone. She said, if you really want to get to know someone, take a 10 day trip with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you, I never did that. But, okay. You never did that. Yeah. You just moved in with guys. No, I'm just kidding with me. No, but I, we've talked about how people, you don't really get to know someone until you actually either live with them or go on an extended trip with them. Yes, because you get to see a lot of their day-to-day -day type of stuff. Not yeah. everything, but how they treat, treat waiters, yeah. how they, um, you know. How like they handle that. crisis at the airport. Yeah, yeah crisis at the airport. <laughs> She's laughing at me because I don't handle them well. Uh, well, that's why I have you there to handle all that. So, but my point is you really don't get to know someone unless you spend a concentrated amount of time. A few minutes before I uh, we got ready for this uh, live stream, I can share with you. I had some woman said, I've been in a relationship with a guy and you know, we're, we're not communicating with one another. And when I read further, it's a long distance relationship. She's never met him. And this has been going on three yeah. years. And I'm like, you're not in a relationship. You're in a cyber relationship in this particular case. But anyway, mm -hmm. okay. So coming back to men are attracted to women who don't try hard. You embodied what I felt was a nice balance between making effort but not making too much effort. Okay. And I think, I hope you felt that I was the same. I made effort. I wasn't trying too hard, but I was still making effort. And I'm a... No, I, okay. I just know how, about me. Okay, I mean, but I'm saying, how did yeah. it feel? Did that feel like I made too much effort? No. Not enough effort? No, so, because if I wouldn't have been into you, I would have cut it off. Okay, so you were into me enough and then you basically invested and yeah. tested going yeah. back to what Matthew Hussey says yeah. or what I talk about passionate and detached, meaning you are open to the possibility and yet detached from the outcome. All right. So men are attracted to women who don't try very hard, but also you have to make effort. Well, you have to let the guy know that you're interested. If, yeah. you're, if you don't let them know that some way, then it's not going to happen. I like so. saying, I like you. You know how we do that with each other? Yeah. I like that. I like, well, I'm um, just for, for those out there, we, we oftentimes say, you know, I, I like you. Yeah. To me, like is a really endearing term because it's not just love, love. We, we can care for someone, but to actually like them means you like their personality. You like the way they view the world. You like the way they um, part their hair. Oh. <laughs> She parted her hair differently today. So That's how I always used to wear. Okay. Anyway, all right. I think this would be a perfect place to start taking questions. Okay. We're By gonna... the way, I, I like you, but I sometimes I don't like you as much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do a tit for tat. I can relate. <laughs> Oh my God. Now you just gave fodder for one of our followers who's going to claim that you have all the power in the relationship. <laughs> Anyway, for those who know my format, if you have a question, write the word question and post the question there after, or you can purchase a super sticker, super chat. Uh, there's a little dollar sign in the chat box. All of the money's from the super sticker, super chat goes to a scholarship fund in the name of my son, Connor Asley. He's my son who passed away five years ago. That's a picture of him right there. Look at that new picture. Oh, I hadn't seen that one. Okay. Oh, what a cutie. He's the, the little one there. What a cutie. He passed away five years ago. So in his honor, I donate to causes like the Hoffman Process and Insight Institute, just to name a few. And we've already got a bunch of questions already here. So let's see what we have. Oh, I want to give props out to Rachel, who's a member of our YouTube community. I want to thank you so much. Um, Donna wrote, question. 
Hi, Jonathan and Marie. I'd like to know if you ever used a professional matchmaking service and how you both feel about that route as opposed to online sites. I got this. Oh, <laughs> wow. You just wanted to jump in. No, I um, I was in a professional dating service as part of their, I, I didn't pay for it, you uh -huh. know, because they charge people a lot of money. And, you know, it, talk about an investment. You talk to somebody, you know, you do a chat and then they, they would fly in you know, to meet me, okay. but like, right. I needed to make that assessment right there because I was not going to invest it. And I, would, I didn't want to lead people on, but so, I, but I really felt like, um, you know, it's not any different than a dating app because the men are shown these pictures. I, you know, I was interviewed for this so that they had me in their database and they would select me. Um, you know, it was really flattering that, you know, they would fly in just to take me out to dinner. But um, I only did that three times. And, okay. And it, it but how'd you feel out. about the process itself? Did you feel like they did a good job vetting for you? I don't, the, honestly, I don't think they really vet. It's yeah. just they, I mean, the client is the guy. And so it's not. So they just want to set them up with beautiful women. They want to set them up. <laughs> That's a you know, or thank you, or or they just I don't know how they do it. Do they go through a database and say what about this one? What about that one? So, so that I, I'm not sure how it works. So I want to give you my thoughts on this because what you were on that matchmaking service, you were known as a resource. In other words, mm -hmm. they they had men, they had women in the database for the men that for paid men. for. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've been the opposite. I've been the resource for a matchmaking service that yeah. charge women. And now the one thing is the matchmaker I knew was a personal friend. So mm -hmm. she knew my personality. She right. knew me. So she knew she, I think she knew I was a good guy. Right. Okay. Now the women, and she was a friend. She wanted to help set me up. Right. Um, the challenge is, you know, chemistry isn't something that you can, you know, you can't put it on paper. <laughs> yeah. You can't put it on paper. Yeah. So while now let me rewind for a second. We're watching a show called the Indian matchmaker. Oh, yeah. OK, for those who are not familiar on Netflix is the India matchmaker. It just started their third season. We start research research for me. OK, <laughs> what's interesting and something I read in a blog by Ariel Ford, if you don't know who Ariel Ford is, she wrote the book called Soulmate Secret in her blog today. She talked about the Indian matchmaker about the Indian matchmaker says, look, if you get 60 percent of what you're looking for, you're ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. The problem is, and you know, the matchmakers rolling her eyes saying how the people are so picky. Right. You know, right. the challenge with the matchmaker is that she does put quality people in front of them, but oftentimes our ego gets in the way of, of actually finding a yeah. good partner. So here's the thing. Are matchmaking services worth it? You know, it is a big investment. Uh, it's a spoke in the wheel. Um, what I'd like to do in my private coaching is for, to teach you how to become your own matchmaker. So by the way, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call with me and a link in the description below. If you need some support with that, Donna, I can help you become your own matchmaker. All right, let's keep swimming here. Um, Oh, M Melanie says, because Marie speaks her truth, uncomfortable or not, it it builds trust. And some might heart, it might be hard to hear, but it builds trust, you know, as she she has your best interest. You know, coming yeah. back to what I, she shared er, previously about the deodorant thing, I was really impressed that I didn't say this earlier, but I just want you to know. I knew that was uncomfortable. It was certainly uncomfortable for me to hear. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, I don't smell like a, you know, whatever. BO all day long kind of thing. <laughs> no. Um, so, but I really appreciated your, your honesty. And since women constantly tell me how they want to have an honest communicate, communicative relationship, it starts by speaking up. <laughs> yeah. And he jumped in the shower yeah. and put on deodorant. Okay. He put on my deodorant. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you said it worked better. So, all right. So thank you so much for that, Melanie. Let's keep swimming here. Uh, let's see. Wanda writes a question. My, my best friend says I feel safe with the air fryer guy, but because he's not my type and I don't want to feel anything for him, how do I get myself to start feeling again for my type? You know, 
I think when we, did you have a thought? Well, I want to make sure I okay. don't cut you off. Oh, <laughs> I do have a thought. Okay. It's like when you go out to buy a dress and, you know, you go straight for the stuff, you know, you like, you know, yeah. you like, you know, you like, this is what I'm going to try on. And then the, the salesperson suggests something. You're like, oh no, that's not my type of style. And then you try it on and you go, darn, I never thought I'd like this. <laughs> so that's how I view it. Oh, interesting. So you know what I think about the problem with our type is the box we create. Remember we talked well, about that? Yeah, but it's yeah. also because we, we're, you know, we're stuck in what we think we want or what, you know, our box. Yeah. That we're not, we don't like try and deviate to something else because, okay, this is my type. This so, is not my type. Okay, so in okay, all. You weren't my type. And you weren't my type. You lived far away and I wanted someone younger than me. <laughs> um, okay, I wasn't your type. What's your type? Oh, because I wore jeans and flip-flops. And that's oh, when he told me he was a shorts and flip-flops kind of guy. And I, you know, I like dressing nice. And I thought, eh, I don't know. I don't know. Now everyone says I dress nicer on my videos. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so we weren't each other's type. But I think where we were each other's type, what matters most mm -hmm. is in our character, in our communication style, in our um, ability to be uh, compassionate towards one another. Our, our values were aligned. Mm -hmm. And eventually where we differed, like our lifestyle differences, you know, our style differences. Look at look at me. I'm dressing up a little bit nicer. I wear a sport yeah, coat. Yeah, we got, yeah, what's we my gotta, shirt? You got to straighten you up yeah, here. Yeah, my shirt isn't quite fitting yeah, on right. Yeah. So the thing is, is what your type might be, might be your block from a trip because what matters most is character. To me, that's the most important thing. And within compatibility is communication styles. Um, mm -hmm. I think also being with a giver versus with someone who's a taker, you know, you Best know, what relationships talking. are where both people come to give. Yeah. It's and like I Tony think, Robbins statement. Well, and dating is a is a process of taking. How? Oh. Okay. So I'm evaluating you to see if you fit me instead of am I going to fit for you? Like if you're not coming at it by saying how can I give instead mm -hmm. of like okay, I'll give you an example. He didn't pay, you know, he you know, he didn't pay for the date, you know, kind of thing. That's an argument of of expecting. Well, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that argument isn't coming from a giver. It comes from a taker. Yeah, but there's a lot that plays into something like that. I get that. But my point is when I hear women argue about it, that's coming from a place of taking, not giving. Well, because if they're looking for somebody that, that's generous and giving, I could see how that would be a disappointment. I get the disappointment, but when you complain about it, it's an energy of taking okay. versus an observation of it. Anyway, that's just my two cents on that. This is where people are going to probably start complaining about me in a minute. <laughs> All right, let's keep going here. I hope I answered your question, Wanda. Uh, Kristen says, hi, Jonathan. I've been following for years. I'm so happy for you. What a beautiful woman inside and exa out an example for us singles. Oh, thank yeah, you. I wanted to give you your, thank yeah. You. That's sweet. Okay, Miss Meadows says, question, I'm 49, new boyfriend is 52. I vetted him relentlessly, first healthy relationship of my life. I swore not to have sex until we were in love. We just said I love you to each other. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> I know what. Go ahead. What were you going to say? No, I wasn't going to say anything. I, I was going to say, now have sex. <laughs> Fuck your brains out. Oh, my God. God I said oh the F God. word. Have fun. Go have sex. <laughs> That's what's next. Build a relationship with each other. Uh, Jonathan should be easy since you're a dating relationship coach. No, I can be a pain in the ass because of what I do for a living. <laughs> you see, she nods her head. Love Dreaming Peach says, question, how far apart do you guys live? How far apart did you used to live apart? Also, you are so cute, both of you. Well, thank oh, you. Uh, we lived... I lived in Chicago and he lived in California. And uh, now we live in the same place. Yeah. So <laughs> that lasted for five months. 
until we moved in together. And we actually got a place together. We, I moved out of my place. You moved out of your place. So we signed a lease together. So we're stuck with each other for how long? Another year and a half or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was talking about breaking the lease. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we were having a joke the other day about that. Anyway, uh, I hope that answers your question. Oh, my God. Just even saying what I just said is going to probably spark, you know, who to comment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jeannie writes, question. Um, why are some men so stupid to talk sex right away? <laughs> Because that's what men are always thinking about. Yeah. It's true. true, not true. Yeah, you know, we, uh, what was that? Uh, what was that? Uh, remember the thing about the wires and the, remember the brains? Oh, yeah. The, the women's brain, the man's brain is a bunch of uh, cabinet, like uh, boxes. 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 And then there's also a nothing box. And men okay. go to that nothing box. Okay, but they, but the biggest the, box, but the biggest box in our brain is what box? Sex. Okay. And then, the woman's brain is just a bunch of wires all, all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so women are oftentimes while having sex thinking, oh, I forgot to take out the trash. I forgot to put away the dishes. Oh, I forgot shoot. to do that. The, the clothes are still in the well, washer. Sure. <laughs> and guys are like, when am I going to come? <laughs> okay. That's just guys. That's why we talk sex right away. Well, you know what? Why men talk sex right away is also to test your boundaries. Yeah, but you know, there's. I you threw can, a you, sexual innuendo on okay. our first date, and and I gave it right back to you. Yeah, but <laughs> but I mean that that's different than someone that's already talking sex. Like to me, it wasn't talking sex. Yeah, that was just throwing out a little innuendo. Yeah, and I think guys do that. We're just testing your your you know your whether I was going to go home with him. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not so much that but also to see how playful you are. And if yeah. I was met with resistance, I probably you would have been kind of uh, cruel, not cruel to me, but you would have created a wall and then would have never went anywhere. Yeah. I take responsibility. It was a risk, but I kind of felt that um well we had a couple drinks in this too. I so know. plus I'm chill. Yeah, you're chill. <laughs> By the way, she's chill. By the way, if it's not men are attracted to women who don't try hard. Men are attracted to women who are chill. We love okay. chill women, or at least I do. Okay. Uh, so Sharon says, run, Marie. He's a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, that's funny. That's funny because I really am familiar with a narcissistic personality disorder. And do I even come close to a narcissistic personality disorder? No, no. Okay. Do I apologize? Yes, you do. Do I take ownership when I make a mistake? Yes, you do. Do I have empathy? Yeah. yeah okay. okay. Let's not talk about right. things. Even though I'm a Leo. <laughs> <laughs> and the world revolves around me. Okay. Question. How did you get, how did you let him know you liked him? I recently started practicing tango with a man. He flirts. We talk. We're planning more dancing. Would you initiate a coffee or just wait? Um. You know, I, I never had a problem. Um, I think I may not be an expressive communicator, but I think okay. I'm a good communicator. Okay. And if I was, um, if I was interested in, I would say something like, Hey, you want to go out for coffee after this? Or, you know, I, I really enjoy hanging out with you. I don't have a problem saying stuff like that. So in our first communication, you know, we talked for an hour right. uh, and then I didn't follow up with a phone call and you initiated a phone call. Mm -hmm. And I told you on that phone call that I didn't like our first phone call. Yeah. And then we fast forward. He, he, we spoke for four hours. Well, but, day. but my point is, <laughs> is that you initiated that phone call. I know we jokingly say you chase, but initiating and making effort isn't chasing, no. you know? So in this particular case, Dana, you can make effort, say, Hey, would you like to get a cup of coffee? Like, why is that such a, why do why is there a belief that that's a no-no? That's yeah. just saying you're a human being. Right. I'd like to, or to do it to me. Say, I'd put, What? You're to, a human being? What? And I'd like to take you out to coffee. Oh, you want to go out for coffee? Yeah. I mean, it's like Taco uh, Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. Oh, let's go out for a drink later. <laughs> but folks, it's not, it's just that simple. You can simply say, I, to, you can be a woman saying it to a guy. Hey, would you like to get a cup of coffee? Well, and here's the thing. You you already have something in common. Yeah. You're doing something. You're having fun. You know, I think you said you had seen 
been dancing a couple of times. Yeah, they go dancing. I, I tango. would absolutely say, do you want to go out, you know, grab a bite? Do you want to do, I, you know, I, oh, I, I want to talk to you. I had a woman once we met through uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, she had saw one of my videos See. on scene. Thank yeah. you for the correction. She'd seen one of my, <laughs> saw, seen, duh. Uh, she'd seen one of my videos and, um, and so she wrote me a message that I really liked one of your videos. And I said, wow. And I looked at her profile picture. I'm like, you're cute. Do you want to get a, a drink? And she said, yes. During the date, you know what she said to me? If mm -hmm. you asked me out on a date, I'd say yes. I like that. I like mm -hmm. that she said, if you'd asked me out on a date, I'd say yes. So I initiated the, my point is, Dana, is you initiate coffee. If during the coffee, there's some connection between the two of you, you can simply say, hey, by the way, if you had asked, if you asked me out on a date, I'd say yes. That's making effort. It, it Now it puts him in an awkward position because if he doesn't, he goes, okay, I, you know, let me think about it, you know, whatever he says, but at least it lets him know it, it takes it from a friendship capacity to something more. Well, I think that that's a great idea okay. to say something like that. That's probably something that I, I would have done being in that situation. Because, would you have? Yeah, because, you know, like I, you want, you have to communicate. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I like you. We're doing this, having so much fun. You know, if you really wanted to go out on a date with me, I'd really, I, no, I would welcome the opportunity. Yes. That's how I said okay. it. Okay, welcome that's the opportunity. I would say. I'd welcome the opportunity to get to know you better. Okay, see, get to know you better. See, yeah. that's, see, that's, okay. Dana, did we help you out? I hope, I hope we did. So. Okay. Uh, let's keep swimming. Or cruising with Elena. Elaine, 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 whatever. God, I'm terrible with names. Elena. Either. Elena. <laughs> Question, how did you learn how to do your makeup? Looks so very professional. Oh, Looks good. <laughs> Oh. Actually, trial and error. But didn't you watch uh, videos? Um, I I did for some things, but oh. um, but mostly it was trial and error. And then you'd see a picture of yourself and go, "Ooh, I'm not doing that again." Now yeah. you use a mirror and lights to help. I you. do. I have. Um, so it was my dream thing when I got I got all new furniture when I moved into this new place, and I wanted a makeup like you know, like Hollywood glam table with all the lights and stuff. And yeah. So, so she has a glam table I in do. the bedroom. <laughs> and so I, I feel like a star I mean, yeah. you can see everything. And then I have a, you know, well, you are magnification. a star. Oh, thanks, <laughs> all right. Let's keep, I hope you answered Thank your question. You. That's real sweet of you. Okay. Uh, let's keep swimming. Rachel says, thanks for the shout out. You're very welcome. She's one of our members here. Uh, let's keep going. Question. Nicole says, Marie, what are your thoughts about the red pill narrative with men? I know you don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. <laughs> so the red pill narrative is, well, I mean, my cliff note version of it is that the feminist movement ruined relationships. You know, I was I'm giving you the cliff note okay, version of that. I wasn't alive and dating during the the feminist movement early on yeah um so like yeah you hear about you know it's just what we've all heard i don't i don't i don't i'm not a feminist my daughter i'm thinking about my daughter because right. you know she's young and she's very you know very much about doing her own thing and paying for her own things and that um so i don't does it ruin relationships? I'm not. I'm well, not sure. I believe women's empowerment is healthy because yeah. what did we talk about? Okay. So I said how women give their power away yeah. in relationships, which is basically a narrative that used to be for centuries. Women were property. They were known as chattel. Women were yeah. second class citizens. I'm all in favor of a woman's empowerment. Now, I'm not in favor of women who act controlling. Mm. I'm not in favor of women who act uh, condescending. I'm not in favor of women who are critical. I'm not yeah. in favor of women who stonewall, play hard to get. I'm not in favor of women who are defensive. All of those behaviors might be associated with 
feminist, but that's not what the movement is about. It's about a woman's empowerment. Can women be absolute bitches in relationship? Yeah, but men can be absolute yeah. jackoffs, jackoffs, jackasses, jerks, and assholes. I was trying to put those two together. And they can be narcissists. They can be sociopaths. So, human so can women. Oh, God, yeah. So can women. Um, so it's I. the equality had to happen because women cannot be doing the same job as a man and get paid less. That yeah. is unacceptable. Yeah. Yeah, to me, that's unacceptable. But I don't think um, as far as relationships, if you are from a different culture, it, that's an issue because some men, you know, women are still, they have to stay in their place. Oh, what's and, the 90 day fiance oh, the, the other way? What's the couple, the blonde haired gal oh, yeah, with that Egyptian, Egyptian guy? guy. Yeah. And it's like the Egyptian man wants a subservient woman. And to me, ladies, I'm not in favor of that. So coming back to the red pill narrative, I'm, I know Marie isn't as familiar, but my opinion at this, women's empowerment is a necessity for a healthy, happy relationship. Ladies, you are in charge of your relationship destiny. Don't that leave that up to a guy, okay? All right, let's keep swimming. Elena says, Marie is even more gorgeous today. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's keep swimming. Let's see. Now, before you get to the next question, so I have two sons that are married to very powerful women, and one is a bigger wet breadwinner, and but they're a they're team players. Yeah. So in for my kids, they love the fact that their women are very uh, empowered. Oh, yeah. And, and they're well, very they're, a team in their relationship. They're, and they're their great moms. They're great partners. They're, I, you know, I couldn't be happier. I love my two daughter-in-laws. Mm. All right. Question from Melanie. I'm transitioning to living with my fiance after a year. I, I, on, wait, I'm on the verge of being an empty nester. How, without placating, do I split time between my four kids and my new life? Ooh. Well, I have four kids. How many grandkids do you have? I will have my fifth one uh, first week of June. Okay. Um, so I go to Chicago every six to eight weeks. And I see the two that are there and the ones that are here. We see them once a month, at yeah. least, you know. Um, everybody's busy. Everybody's working. But, you know, you just make it happen. I think what we both do is we make time for our family. Our family mm -hmm. is an integral part of our relationship. Mm -hmm. We get together with her two kids here. We get we have dinner with my son uh, every out. about a month. Yeah. We go out. We have a good time. I think it's important to um, not placate, but work as a team. You know. Yeah. So I okay. I'm not a very demanding of Marie's time. We're both not. It's interesting. I want to share something with everyone. So you were out of town for 10 days. Right. Um, when you're out of town, I don't care if we speak on the phone or not. I mean, I'm not, right. when I say I don't care, I'm not dependent upon that communication. I'm not jonesing for that communication. Yeah. I do appreciate when we do communicate, but I know so many people when they're apart, they feel this desperate need to communicate. Why don't I feel that we need? And I don't think you feel, I think mm -hmm. you feel the same way is we're secure in our relationship. Right. When two people are secure in a relationship, there isn't this need to constantly be filling space with one another. Well, and the other thing is that, yeah. you know, you know, I'm busy when yeah. I'm there. I'm, you know, I don't have my phone with me all the time when you're chasing a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not also chasing me down. If we didn't speak that night, it wasn't like, okay, no big deal, yeah. you know? So anyway, I'm, I'm just pointing out when you're in a secure relationship, you don't have this need to smother each other for time is where I was going with that. Okay. Did you Let's... keep the house clean? What I kept it? the house clean. Oh, okay. Question. Do you help married couples or just dating folks? Mm. Well, I have helped married couples lately. I've had women reach out to me. I've actually spoken to some boyfriends of relationships. Not, I've actually been asked to speak to a husband merely just to have a conversation. So yes, I can. But typically I work with um, single. Well, and and you, with friends, you've yeah. mediated. Yeah, I've actually mediated a couple yeah. of couples. That's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. 
Hey, I want to give a shout out to Leaf, one of the members of our group. Leaf's in the house. Thanks so much. Tanya wants to know, Marie, how's your shoulder doing? My shoulder's getting better. It's, you know, slow. It's a slow process, but uh, I went to see my therapist today and, and he's working on it. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, you for asking. All right. Question from Nicole. To expand upon the red pill question, a lot of red pill men say that women are useless after age 30 and that they, and they tell all men, wait, and they tell men of all ages to only date younger women. What are your thoughts on that? Okay. So <laughs> there's this, there's this talk, you're not familiar with it, mm -hmm. that a woman's sexual market value is only good till she's 30 years old. Okay, so that's her sexual wait, market. Wait, wait. So my daughter then is she's past her she's prime. Past yeah, her prime. so sadly she's past her prime. Okay, <laughs> so now in within the red pill community, they all say that women hold all the cards when dating. Okay, that women mm -hmm. hold all the cards, uh, and that because women are way too picky, they're letting um, men of you know of a certain they're letting a lot of good men slip through the cracks. Okay, mm -hmm. now my belief is this: first off, a person's value. Look at Betty White was 99 and she was still rocking it out there. So it doesn't matter what age you are. As far as sexual market value, look at my sweetheart's a year older than me. I know you don't like, well, you don't care that I bring that up, but it has nothing to do with age. I mean, it, it can for some people. I do believe women can be overly picky. Women do hold the cards when it comes to sex. Here's the bigger problem in the red pill community that isn't talked about. Men hold the cards with commitment. Men hold all the cards because men traditionally do the asking of marriage. They say they want to take you into their lives. So women, so think about it. Sex happens well before any, wait, where's my, okay. sex happens here while commitment, you have to, well, we're going to take it slow. Not we, but the guys say we're going to take it slow. So this is the problem. A lot of red pill narrative conversations, in my opinion, are missing the deeper conversations. They're talking all about the surface instead of the real question. What does it take for two couples to actually build a life together? That's the most important question that I prefer answered. So anyways. Um, and Art and Soul says red pill men are bitter. I believe that could be the case. Okay. Uh, Who are these red pill men? Oh, it's the whole, there's, there's just, a, it's out in the, you don't follow the news no. of the way I, or the relationship news like I do and be grateful that you don't because yeah. there's a lot of chatter out there that's useless in my opinion. Um, Rachel says you're hitting on, you're hitting upon a big reason why I've avoided relationships. I tend to fall into the limerence. Fortunately, I've been building a secure, solid sense of self and now get worth from the inside. So limerence is that infatuation. Yeah. That's awesome. Yay. Keep way to up. go for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Wanda, I don't know who the air fryer got, what the air fryer is. Uh, so I appreciate you brought it up. There isn't really a air. The air fryer is the only good night doll thing. When you hang at night is just being sweet or wants more. I don't understand your question sometimes. So I apologize, but thank you for posting a question. Wait, S dot says, why should men commit since empowered, uh, women are giving, the VJ vagina away for free. Well, here's the thing. Sex is part, sex is part of the dating process. I mean, mm -hmm. to, to determine if two people are compatible with one another sexually. I think the problem is it's happening way too soon without some level of commitment, meaning monogamy and exclusivity. I think if two people, well, do you agree if two people are going to have sex together, it should be monogamous and oh, exclusive? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So, um, and when we agreed to, when we, when we had sex, we agreed that, you know, we would be monogamous and exclusive with right, one right. another. You read me the whole list. Oh, I read my dating vows. By, by the way, folks. Okay, in the link below is the dating vows. I'm going to put it up on a banner here so you can read it here. I'm going to read this out loud. This is my dating vows. Okay. This is an agreement two people have if they're going to have regular sex together. You laugh at this, don't you? I do because at first I, you know, like we, this is like the third time we saw each other. Okay. But and I thought, I thought, okay, that's pretty intense for 
Well, but if we we're going to be <laughs> intimate with one another, I wanted some agreement here. Okay, I'm the guy doing this, but if a woman said, and this is the agreement, I agree, I, I and Mar Marie and I both said, I agree to explore the process to get to know you with the intent to declare something serious in the next three to six months. I agree to be monogamous sexually while we have regular sex together. I agree not to actively seek to meet, date others while we're in the dating process, including taking down our dating profiles. I agree to speak up if this isn't working for me versus pulling back, ghosting, and disappearing. And I agree to invest regular time together in the process of getting to know you, which looks like spending X amount of time together. So if you'd said this to the guy who wanted to take it slow, what would have happened? Well, I already knew at that point that- You didn't want a relationship want with a him. Relationship with him. <laughs> okay, but the point is, <clears throat> ladies, sex- we can all look at sex as something casual, or we can look at something that means something. In my opinion, the minute you be, you have a physical um, connection with someone and an emotional connection, if that doesn't work out, it can fuck with us. Yeah. When listen, you've had guys break up with you. It it hurt. Yeah. Okay. Now, while there was no guarantee and there are no guarantees, whether you get married or make this agreement to one another, what you want to weed out are the looky loos, the people yeah. who are clearly not ready for a right. relationship because they were so wounded from their past relationships and they haven't healed from them. So folks, I'm a big proponent of asking deeper questions in the early stages of dating, mating, relating. Okay. This will be our last one for the evening. Jeannie from our, my midlife love mastery group says, how many men do you think would sign the dating contract? <laughs> That's the... Okay, I let me just read this to you, Jeannie. I, this is at the very bottom. If you get a copy of the dating vows, you'll see this. 90% of men will bail on this because there are thousands of women who have sex without any commitment or agreement whatsoever. If all women band together going forward, this will... If they all said the dating vows going forward and keep and, and lived up to it, this will change how men treat and view sex. But in the meantime, if he does agree, you have a better chance of commitment than the guy who doesn't. <laughs> but I, I really do believe that it. I think the timing of this has to be right. Well, because otherwise, I, do you wait till 10 seconds before sex? No, no. But I mean, like, if you pop this out when you're having coffee on the first date, no, you're going to think this chick is psycho. No, but this is look at if two, if he's expressing interest in you, if he's expressing physical interest in you, first off, make sure no alcohol is involved because that's going to change everything. <laughs> but if he's expressing interest saying, hey, look, I just need you to know something about myself. Uh, when I'm physically intimate with somebody, I like to be monogamous, not sleep with other people. And if I'm exploring intimacy with someone, that means I don't want to explore intimacy with someone else, sexual okay. intimacy. So the other thing is, okay. if, you know, that's the time to say, Hey, uh, for me, let's yeah. do some, you know, some testing here. Yeah. Too. You could do an STD test or yeah. whatnot, but ultimately go, if he says, no, I'd like to explore a relationship. Well, guess what? I've got something handy <laughs> to talk to you about. These are the dating vows. It used to be wedding vows. Remember before a guy could get laid, he had to marry you. Well, this is doing a little bit of due diligence beforehand. Uh, and Cassandra says, you're right, Jonathan. Well, thank you so much. You know what? I want to take you out for a drink tonight. Okay. All right. Taco Tuesday. Let's have a margarita and some guacamole. Folks, I want to thank you all so much for joining us tonight. I hope you found value at men are very attracted to women who don't try hard. Actually, we're really more attracted to chill women who have an easygoing personality a lot more than how much. And effort is important. So let me just end on that note. <laughs> All right, I'm going to end this video as I always do. Can I give you a big, gigantic Jonathan Absolutely. Bear hug? Mm. Can I get one back? Absolutely. Oh, thank you. All right, folks, I want to thank uh, Elena and Jeannie and Estad and Pam and Margaret and Cassandra and JJ and Arthur and GW and Leaf and, uh, let's see, Wanda, I already said that. Nicole, everyone, thanks so much. Have a great bye -bye. evening. Bye, everyone. Be well.